What's up, fourth graders? This is the video for the Unit 2 study guide for the Unit 2 test, which is happening tomorrow. The, in this video, we're going to be talking about comparing fractions and ordering fractions. On your test tomorrow is also going to be some information regarding equivalent fractions, which is using the same exact strategies just to decide if the fractions are the same. So this video, although it does not directly in, introduce or talk about equivalent fractions, it shows you all the same strategies and all the same steps to do that. Stick around. Today in class, we talked about how to think about fractions. So I'm going to put this right here. How to think about fractions. Remember this? We talked about thinking about fractions in terms of size. We talked about thinking about fractions in terms of the one method multiplying a fraction times one in fraction form to get the same thing meaning. We've said that a hundred times a day, okay? So this image right here is what we talked about today. Thinking about fractions. Thinking about fractions in terms of size first. The denominator tells you how big the piece is and then comparing fractions to the whole or half. Then using the one method if you have to. Hopefully you only have to change one fraction but change however many you must. If you have to change both, change both, okay? As I continue on in this video, I'm gonna be showing you very specific strategies for each thing. So how do we compare fractions with the same denominator? Let's say we have two fifths and three fifths. When we have the same denominator, that means that these things are the same size piece. So a fifth is, and we're thinking about birthday cake, remember? If you have five friends, you're gonna cut your cake into five pieces. So this is two fifths. This here would be three fifths. Which is more, three fifths or two fifths? Three fifths is more because we have more fifths, okay? We're gonna put our inequality sign this way because as we know, the alligator eats the bigger number. That is how you would compare fractions with the same denominator. Okay. So how do we compare fractions with the same numerator? We have two fifths here and two thirds here. When we have the same, now we're gonna start talking about birthday cake some more. We have fifths here, we have thirds here. So if I have a birthday cake and it's the same size birthday cake cut into three pieces, those pieces are going to be bigger because I have less cuts. We've been talking about this. The more cuts you make, the smaller the pieces are. And so then here we have fifths and we have these cuts are gonna be smaller. The pieces are gonna be smaller because we're cutting them into more pieces as we need more cake. That's how we think about fractions in our classroom. So I have two fifths and I know that fifths are smaller because I have to cut it more. Or I have two thirds and I know that the thirds are bigger because I have less cuts to make so that shows me that two thirds is gonna be bigger. When we're talking about comparing fractions and we're talking about fractions and their size, we know the denominator tells us the size of the piece. We can also compare these fractions to the whole or the half. And we know that the whole, this 12 tells us how many pieces are in the whole. So that shows us that 7 twelfths is gonna be greater than a half because we know that 7 twelfths, that 1 half is the same as 6 twelfths, and 7 twelfths is more than the half. So that tells us that this is bigger. Let's talk about a fraction in relation to the whole. So like 9 twelfths versus, 9 twelfths versus, I don't know, 9 tenths. Which one is closer to the whole? The 9 tenths is only one away from the whole, whereas the 9 twelfths is 9, 10, 11, 12, three away from the whole. So this one, that means that 9 tenths is gonna be bigger because it's only one away. You can compare fractions to the whole or compare them to the half. This is how you talk about, when we're thinking about fractions, we think about their size. When we're using the birthday cake, how many more pieces do we need to get to the whole? How many pieces do we need to get to the half? Okay, so we're gonna use the one method now. That's what we call it in class. 
We are going to take two thirds and three twelfths and we're going to find what we call a common denominator. We are going to look at the three and look at the 12 and think to ourselves, can I turn this three into a 12? Because all of my students know that you can change any fraction you want to make it what you want it to be to help you figure things out. So how this works is, how can I make my three turn into a 12? Is it possible? Let's see, three, six, nine, 12, 15, bingo. Here's my 12 right here, one, two, three, four. I know that three times four equals 12. That's gonna get me the common denominator that I'm looking for here. So the one method tells me that if I multiply the bottom times three, I'm allowed to multiply the top, or times four, I'm sorry. I'm allowed to multiply the top times four because anything times one is itself. And when I multiply a fraction times one in fraction form, that gives me the same thing, new name. Your students will know what that means. Two times four is eight. This is eight twelfths. And now that I have common denominators here, it's very clear to see that two thirds is greater than three twelfths using the one method. So now on the one method, you have to change what you must like I, in the picture that I shared. So here we can see that when we're trying to find a common denominator between five and seven, nothing times five equals seven. So I'm gonna have to go until I can figure something out. One of the easiest ways is just to use either of these. So do seven times five and five times seven, again, using the one method here, turn these things into a one, that gives us, oh, I'm off the page, sorry, 35 and 14, and over here, we're gonna have 35 and 15, and that shows us, this is close. See, this is why it's important to know how to do this, because this one here is 14 35ths, this one over here is 15 35ths, so by a very narrow margin, we see that three sevenths is larger. These are the kinds of things we need to be watching out for, that we're using the one method to get these things to be common denominators. We've been talking about that a lot in class. Common denominators are the goal. Okay, and finally, we are going to order some fractions, put them in order, all right? So we have these fractions. We're gonna put them in order from least to greatest. So before we do anything, we're just going to think about the size of these things. One eighth, I know is gonna be pretty small because it's pretty close to zero. Eight pieces is, you know, the smallest amount of all of these. Two fourths, uh, two fourths is half, right? Okay, I know that. Six fifths, ooh, six fifths is over the whole. Because I know that in order, if I've got fifths on the bottom, in order for the five to make a whole, it would be five fifths. And here we have six fifths. And here I know this one is less than half. Okay, so I figured these things out. One eighth and three eighths. They're both less than half. Luckily, they both have the same denominator. So I know that one eighth is gonna come first. Three eighths is gonna come next. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cross these off when I'm done with them so that I know. Next, I have two fourths or six fifths. Well, six fifths is more than a whole, which I know means that it's bigger because it's more than a whole. And two fourths is a half. So that puts two fourths here and six fifths here. This is how you order fractions. Ladies and gentlemen, think first. Think about the size of the fraction before you start doing anything. Because you could have taken this and done this and seen that this was one eighths, three eighths, four eighths, and turn it into eighths just to make it easy on yourself. But we didn't need to do that because before we started, we stopped to think and knew that this was half. So if you will do what I've been telling you and use the size of the fraction first, knowing that the denominators tell you how big the piece is and then comparing to the whole or the half, then use the one method if you need to and change however many of the fractions you need to change, that is gonna give you the most success. This concludes our unit two test study guide review. 
Unit two review. I hope this has helped you think about fractions. I hope this has given you some strategies that you can use, some refreshers as you work on your study guide. If you or your parents have any questions, shoot me a dojo and I will be happy to help you. I'll see you tomorrow when you're ready to take your unit two test. Catch you later.